Chapter 8 Deadly Disappointments So many large plants, Walter exclaimed. His heart beat in excitement as he marched through the thick greenery. Oh, you mean these trees? One of the women confirmed in return. We like it out here. This isn't our real home. We come here every year with the boys on our hunting trip. Have you ever gone hunting before? She asked. Hunting? Asked Squaldor. Yeah, you know, shooting bears, rabbits, birds. She tried to explain to him. No, I'm afraid I've never been. He answered while he looked around and tried to absorb as much as he could from his surroundings. Well, I'll tell the boys. I'm sure they'll love to show you, assumed the dark woman enthusiastically. They arrived at the cabin and the blonde woman unlocked the door. He looked on both sides of the hut and hesitated before going ins inside of it. The other women jumped onto the porch and made the wood creak. The sound was unfamiliar to Qualdor as he continued inspecting the wooden structure. The bikini-clad women happily ran inside of the cabin as Qualdor continued observing the outside of the small home. The thick black-haired woman with dark slanted eyes poked her head outside of the cabin's door and motioned with one finger for Qualdor to follow them inside of the cabin. Qualdor stepped on the creaky porch and into the wooden cabin. What he saw inside startled him so much that he took a deep breath and his eyes flew wide open. The cabin's walls were lined up with motionless creatures hanging as picture frames. Noticing his startled expression, the dark woman said, These are some of the animals the boys caught while they were out hunting. Qualdor observed the other parts of the cabin while the women ran into their rooms to change. Each time he attempted to look at something different, his gaze returned to the dead animals on the walls. Loud, heavy steps, accompanied by heavy, burly voices, could be heard in the distance outside the cabin. The women ran out of their rooms dressed in sandals, shorts, and shirts. They sang mischievously in unison, The boys are here, while smiling at Qualdor. They each ran out of the cabin, giddy like teenage girls, shaking their hands with excitement. Qualdor observed them from behind a sheer white curtain hanging in front of the cabin window. Each of the women ran up to her respective brawny man and hugged around his protruding belly. The husky men wrapped their big arms around their prospective women while holding dead animals in one hand and high-powered rifles in the other. As they walked back to the cabin, each woman explained to her man the day's encounters. Qualdor concluded from their loud conversation that he was a topic of discussion. When they arrived on the squeaky wooden porch, it caved in dramatically due to the combined weight of the big men. They proceeded to drop off their day's hunt on top of the large wooden table on the porch. From the window, Qualdor observed the dead foxes, rabbits, and birds the men caught earlier that day. Once inside the cabin, the men made their way beyond the entrance towards Qualdor. They stared at him with intimidation to quickly determine if he was a worthy adversary or not. Although Qualdor's frame stood at about their same height and was defined by the elegant definition of his athletic build, the protruding guts and giant extremities made Qualdor feel like a dwarf in comparison. Must be one of them spies that crossed our borders, whispered one of the men to his hunting companions. Qualdor looked them over and was certain he had never seen men so big and beefy. Their size, combined with the amount of hair on their faces, made them more comparable to the animals they hunted than to any man Qualdor had ever seen before. So you're the foreigner, ascertained one of them mockingly. Yes, I am a foreigner, Qualdor replied. You must be tired of traveling such a long distance in that small bubble you were in, the big man taunted Qualdor. Yes, I am very tired, Qualdor replied unsuspectingly. Why don't you show him to the guest room and let the boy rest for a while, suggested one of the other men. He went on, and tomorrow, boy, 
We're going to take you hunting, he laughed fervently. The other men joined in the laughter as if that was the funniest thing they had ever heard, while one of them passed out rounds of beer to his boys and their women. The blonde woman gulped down half a can of beer and directed Qualdor to follow her to the guest room. The stupefied laughter rose to higher heights with the outpouring of beer in Qualdor's departure. The woman opened the guest room door. The room was pretty neat and orderly. She showed him to his bed and exited the room as she waved goodbye to him. Qualdor stared beyond the sheer white curtain of the window that hung above the bed. As he stood there, so many thoughts ran through his mind. Pictures of many things he didn't understand. Nothing was making sense, especially in comparison to how he envisioned Atlantic. Darkness fell in his room. He lay fully clothed on top of the bed and closed his eyes. Suddenly he heard laughter and jeering from the outside of his room. The sound startled him and he sat up on the bed. He wondered whether he should investigate the laughter. Sliding out of bed, Qualdor tiptoed to the door and cracked it open. The door creaked softly while he looked through the small opening to the outside. The view was ample enough for him to see the men laughing, drinking, and playing with the women. Before getting caught, Qualdor let the door slowly creak back to a closed position and returned just as quietly back to the bed. As soon as he laid down, thoughts of his home flooded forth and raced through his mind. The laughter stopped and it became deathly quiet outside of his bedroom. He listened carefully to the creaking of the door and saw light spill into his room. Holding his breath, he sat up on the bed and wondered if a brawny intruder was to blame. A sigh of relief exited through his lips as he watched the three women enter the room. The women shut the door as quietly as possible, but the noise made with every movement was unavoidable. The women walked softly and sat on the bed. He felt no threat or bad intentions of any kind from the ladies. Hey, we want to know some more about you, one of them said in a sultry tone. Feeling somewhat comfortable in their company, Qualler backed himself up on the bed and leaned on the wall beneath the window to make more room for them to get more comfortable. He began relating to them the many things about his home and his people, even about his wedding ceremony. He described how at the very moment he was about to promise his devotion to the love of his life, sudden destruction struck the only home he had ever known. The ladies were so engrossed and fascinated by his story that just as they were focusing their attention to hear more, the door suddenly flew open and crashed with a startling bang on the wall behind it. The huge beast of a man stormed into the room yelling, get out of there, as he lifted two of the women with one arm and the third with his other arm and lightly discarded them into the other room. You best leave our women alone, boy and get yourself some sleep, boy. You got a big day tomorrow, boy. A very big day, boy, the big man said with a harsh laugh as he slammed the door behind him. A feeling of entrapment filled Qualdor's body. He sat on the bed with his back to the wall, wondering where he could run to in the middle of darkness, when he didn't even know where he was. Through the window, he contemplated the moon that was so beautiful and serene he let the stars twinkling bright in a dark night sky distract his mind while he marveled at these beautiful sights. The beauty before him made him see Sunny's lovely face smiling above him. Soon his weariness won him over and he fell asleep, basked in moonlight. Certainly this must be Atlantic, he thought while half asleep. Then just as quickly he turned towards the door and whispered, this can't be Atlantic. The women, the confusion, the moonlight. He tossed and turned between dreams and reality until finally succumbing to a deep sleep. 
From the outside of his room, he heard pots and pans clanging while plates slammed on top of the table. The morning ritual startled him up from bed. 